Right here on TBS, the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series kicked off the first half of the Northwestern Swing. Non-stop heavy metal, bumper to bumper, fender flailing, racing at its best. Dickel will have no part of it. He puts his foot down, but it's Hornaday in the main straightaway. They touch, they touch again and again. Oh, wow. It's over with points leader Rich Bickle taking the Portland Checkers, his first ever Craftsman Truck victory. Come on, Rich, you can do it on the outside just like we did last week. Come on, baby. So take it from Mother Bickle. It's going to be another short track slugfest as the Craftsman Truck Series comes to Monroe, Washington. The Napa Car 200, next. And welcome on this Mother's Day weekend to NASCAR Racing. Live from Monroe, Washington, it's race six of the 1997 NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. We're here at the Evergreen State Fairground. Hello, everybody, Ken Squire, and welcome aboard. Of all the tracks we visit, there are few that have the care and detail of this beautiful race facility. They've been running here since 1952 sprint cars, midgets, a garden variety of stock cars. But what's going to fill this 14,000-seat grandstand today are the NASCAR Craftsman trucks. Folks are getting in right now, getting their final souvenirs, their programs, a bite to eat, and then ready to settle down for what they're really here for, hard racing on a hard track, six-tenths of a mile. And to tell you more about it, here's Stock Car Racing Magazine's Dick Bergren. Ken, you're right, this is a beautiful facility, but what counts most is the racetrack itself. This place is big, wide, roomy, and fast. And what a field has assembled today. 17 trucks have broken the existing track record. Everybody, however, is going to be chasing Rich Bickle. He starts on the pole with the same truck that won last week at Portland. But it's a competitive field. Dodge, Ford, Chevy, all in the top 10. Only a half second separates Bickle from truck number 32. To win, it's going to take a great motor, a great setup, a little luck, and a driver with a lot of heart. Let's go to Mike Hogwood. Rich Bickle, favored to win again here today, would be the second week in a row. And right now, getting some advice from his biggest fan, his mom, on this Mother's Day weekend. Let's see he's drop in on this conversation. What we're doing now is just remember our race strategy. He is the number one son, and I love him to death. Happy Mother's Day to our mothers. Well, I got my mom here, and I got two great grandmas, or grandmas back home watching this, and... Uh, you know, to all the mothers out there, happy Mother's Day. Uh, hopefully put this diehard Chevy back in winter circle so we have another celebration like we had last weekend, and it was pretty exciting with my first one. And to be able to do that again, my mom here, do this the second time would be awesome. Let's have a good race. Rich Bickle has the word from his number one fan. Now to Steve Burns. Mike Bless is the defending champion of this race, and he's from just down the road near Portland, Oregon. As we're talking about Mother's Day, the theme is Mother Rose Bliss here. Do you have any last-second instructions for your son? Good luck, have a safe finish, and I love you. Thanks, Mom, and uh, we'll do this one for you and all the mothers, and hopefully we'll be in victory lane. Starting lineup and the start of 200 great laps of NASCAR racing upcoming after these messages. Being rolled out, additional set for 32 trucks, 600 horsepower vehicles that have qualified a half second apart for this $312,000 race. First segment, 100 laps, 101. Then we'll take that break and get that final segment in. Steve Burns talked earlier with some of the principals for this weekend's event. And this is the view Ron Hornaday and Rich Bickle had of each other all day last weekend in Portland, side by side, nose to tail for 200 laps. Rich Bickle was able to pull away for the victory, just barely rich. What do we see today? More of the same? We'll expect the same thing between me and Ron, but you had four or five more trucks to melee today, and you're going to see a great race on TV. All right, Ron, how about you? Can you get by him this weekend? Well, I sure hope so. The Napa Chevrolet is running good, and, uh, you know, it's just management of the tires today, and it's just if you can pace yourself and we get up there, we're running with Rich, but starting on the pole, we'll be all right. And Ron Hornaday also starts in the top ten. Folks, this is going to be great racing. Preliminary lap. Take a look at row one. Rich Bickle, one at Portland. Beside him, Rick Corelli. Row two, Bob Kazalowski for Chrysler. And Jack Sprague, second in points. Going to row three, 
There you have Mike Bliss, the 96th winner of this race, and Ron Barfield for Tom Gloy. In row four, it's Chuck Bound and Ron Hornaday. Going to row five, Tony Raines and Joe Rutman. In row six, it's Jay Sauter and Michael Dockin. Row seven, Jimmy Hensley and Rick McRae qualifying well. Row eight, open cockpit star Randy Talsma and Rick Crawford. Row nine, Brandon Butler and Butch Miller. In row 10, it's Andy Gensman and Dan Press, the West Coast veteran. Row 11, T.J. Clark and Boris Said. Row 12, it's Toby Butler and Tony Roper. In row 13, Brian Reffner there and Lance Norwood. Row 14, Duck George and Stacy Compton. Row 15, Kenny Irwin there, winner earlier this year, and Dave Resendez. In row 16, you've got Cammy Joe Kirk and Kenny Allen, provisional starters as we get ready to send this one on its way. And incidentally, Rutman and Irwin were also provisional starters for today. That's our Econolard starting grid. In trucks, and you're with Mike Bliss. Gave us that great show here for the Team ASE a year ago. And here's Ron Hornaday getting ready to start from eighth position. Or is set, the Auto Parts Ford, the Federated car. Brandon Butler with that Husky Power Tools Dodge and Dodge looking for a big day. Richard Petty has flown in just to watch Jimmy Hensley this afternoon. The NHL Ford, Oklahoma City Blazer himself, Lance Norwick for the NHL car, starting 26 on the field. We do not expect many cautions today. This racetrack has the fewest of any on the circuit, only four for 14 laps in each of the two races they've run here. These are the ones that didn't qualify. Jimmy Bound didn't make it. Billy Sedgwick didn't make it. Cunningham, Goulet, Rush, and Mark Kinzer. Oh, what a sad time for Mark Kinzer. Spun on the first lap of qualifying, then spun on the second lap. The truck came all the way in from Pennsylvania and didn't make the show. So, for Mark Kinzer, it'll be another day. Some different. These 3,400-pound, 600-horsepower trucks to those 1,200 pound 750 horsepower dirt cars that he runs in the sprint series for the outlaws down to the line we come and we're under green rolling out into turn number one under chris morgan's flag and it's even across down into the back straight away among the top four bickle on the inside he's your winner from last week rick corelli on the outside each of those two drivers has won one time only in their truck careers Kazalowski, 43 truck races yet to win the many-time ARCA champion. Number 29 there in third, his best, finest qualifying position. Sprague drops to the inside to defend himself from Mike Bliss in that number two truck. Drivers say tire management will be absolutely critical today. They've got to watch the tire wear. You see rubber already blowing to the left of your screen on the racetrack. The tires wear very quickly here in Portland. It's a rough racetrack in terms of tire wear. The high plains drifter Rick Corelli from Denver, Colorado on the outside, giving it all he's got as he goes wheel to wheel with last week's winner, Rich Bickle, and they're still even across. Not for long, Corelli's got him, Ken. Corelli from the outside the last two years. Second starting position has won this race. That's where Corelli started, and he's leading right now. Long way to go. And the last time Corelli started in second position was at Bristol last year. He won that, so they're looking forward to this thing for sure. Only truck race that he's won. Right out to the wall. Two trucks qualified, broke the old record, and broke the 100-mile-an-hour mark for this six-tenths of a mile track. Corelli and Bickle as they continue hammering out in front. And look at Kazalowski having this great run in the number 29. Chrysler has come to his aid this year. They've added eight members to their team. Four back up in Michigan. Four here with them. And you can see the difference in that number 29 for Ron Kazalowski. Now, three races ago, he had his best finish of sixth. Last week, he had his best finish of fifth. And for this race today, his best ever starting position. Keselowski in that 29, the Dodge on the move. Jack Sprague in fourth. Hornaday is challenging right now on the inside. Hornaday trying to move under Bliss as they fight for fifth spot. There you see those front four. And it's still Bliss hanging on there. And I beg your pardon, that is Barfield in that Tom Gloy truck that's right there, banging on the door. Tom Gloy, the number 55 truck, the great Trans Am champion, 
bought that equipment from Roger Penske, needed a driver. And in getting Ron Barfield in the number 55, he's got himself a racer who can get it done. He finished the top 10 here a year ago. Yeah, Cloy had taken his truck off to three of these races and had failed to make the field. So what does he do? He goes out and he talks to Bill Elliott, an old friend that he had raced with before, and Elliott said, I think I got a fellow who can help you. Barfield put that truck into the field in sixth position. This after they couldn't even make the races. There it is, that number 55. Goes back to 1987, 24 hours of Daytona. Roush, Mustang. They put together a team with Bill Elliott, a stock car driver, and the Trans Am champion Tom Gloy, a stock car driver. Bill Elliott was so smooth, so brilliant. He and Gloy have been friends ever since. And of course, they won that 24-hour race. And it was Elliott who made the call for Gloy to put Barfield aboard today. And what a job he's doing up there still in six spot. Battle for the lead, builds up again. Back to the inside, here comes Bickle. Ah, the hole is not there. Rick Corelli holds on, out of turn two. Rich Bickle turns up the heat, he's up to the door. Corelli bites him off another time. It's gonna be one of those days at Monroe, Washington. Corelli on the outside. Rich Bickle on the inside for first. Kazalowski watching right there in third. They go into the first turn low. The trucks all wash up high. Then they try to drop down low. Corelli couldn't do that coming off the second turn that time. Bickle was right underneath it. It's sort of a diamond kind of pattern that is the fastest way around here. This is not the sort of racetrack where you can pick a line and smoothly just go around. You do have to let the truck drift up when you go into the first turns. It stays a couple of Chevys out in front. And that Dodge hanging on. And there's Bickle down to the inside. Drops the hammer. Pulls up alongside Corelli. In this short track war from Monroe, Washington, we've got a beauty. Bickle is back again makes it stick on the bottom. Corelli likes that high line, and the high plane drifter stays even across at the end of this lap. Hey, 12 laps, here comes Bickle down to the inside, and here comes Kazalowski. Number 29 drops to the inside. Number 17, Bickle goes for the lead and brings Kazalowski with him, and Sprague works there in fourth position. They are all over each other in these early laps. Crew Chief Rick Wren, he's the guy that turns the wrenches on that number six that has just dropped into third position. Corelli told his driver, don't worry if we lose a couple of spots at the beginning. Just conserve your tires. The race will come to us. And Barfield continues to work on the outside as if he wants to go up and challenge in the 55. Don't go away. We've got a dandy in the Northwest. We are under green all the way. And look who's in front. For the first time in his truck racing career, the many-time ARCA champion, Bob Kazalowski, whose brother Ron Kazalowski, also a great racing champion. And that family have raced Chrysler products forever. They're out in front for the first time. They've been racing this series, third year, 43rd race for Bob Kazalowski, and he's pulling away by two truck lengths. And he is strong, Ken. So far today, no one has been able to do that. Anyone who has gotten into the lead up until now has barely been able to hang on to it. Kazalowski with that Dodge did manage to open up some distance. Uh, well, here comes Bickle, though. He's not going to let him get away. Sprague in third spot. He picked up a position just a couple of laps ago. That's the green truck. Sprague has won five times, always on tracks of a mile or better, never won on a short track. Napa scoring as you look down through it. There's Sprague. He's come into third. Corelli, the outside of the front row at the start, back and forth. And look who's up to fifth. Barfield putting on some show in that Ford. Two Fords there. You're riding right now with that ASE Ford. That's Mike Bliss, last year's winner, holding right on to the bottom. won three of these truck races. He won at Wilkesboro, he won here, and one other. Wilkesboro and here are virtually identical. He has basically the same setup he has used to win those two races. They say the tires are the same all the way around in these trucks. Uh, the way they handle, the way the pavement acts as North Wilkesboro. Take a look at Bliss on the outside. Hornaday on the inside, and here comes Ron Hornaday. 
the 1995 winner of this event, charging through on the bottom of that great struggle with Joe Rutman that year. First year, 95, they ran 150 laps. Last year, 200 laps. And this track, they get around better than any other. Fewer laps under caution than any other place they run. We're looking back at Barfield. He's the blue truck on the bottom. Whoa, close going into that turn. Bliss on the outside. Barfield put two wheels in the grass a couple of laps ago, trying to get under Bliss, but Bliss has got the spot. There's not much Barfield can do about it. And the 99 of Chuck Bound is in eighth position there. You see it, that number 99? That is Chuck Bound. Right behind him in ninth is Rutman. Rutman with that great run last week until he got tangled up with Tammy Joe Kirk and wound up in the wall. That's the same truck that ran so well last week in Portland. Michael Dockin back in 10. Let's go to Mike Hogwood. It is really exciting here in the Keselowski pit with Ron Keselowski and his wife against brother run up. What is different today? What's happening with Bob? Uh, that Mopar performance dodge, uh, it hooked up pretty good. We worked on it hard yesterday. We didn't get to practice the last practice session because of an engine problem. And uh, we went back to the motel last night, talked about a setup, and put it in it. That's what we're doing. What is Bob saying to you, do you think? No, he's not talking at all. He can talk to the spotter. All right, they're excited down here, but this race is still early, still a long way to go. Take Whoa. a look at this. Here's Hornaday down the inside. 14,000 people up and shouting as Ron Hornaday makes the move on Pirelli. That's for fourth position. Sprague in the green truck is in third spot. Hornaday on the bottom, Corelli on the high side. Number six, Corelli getting pinned out there. He's going to fall to six. Bliss moving up. Even across, they love to watch Ron Hornaday run this six-tenths of a mile track. You're riding with Mike Bliss. Remember, they can average over 100 miles an hour on this six-tenths of a mile short track. Some facility here near Seattle, just north of Seattle, where we're broadcasting today. Hornaday, last year's champion in this series with 11 career wins. Straight backing up. Let's review the front of the field for you. Out in that top spot. Now take a look at that 99. Bound, having a great run and bringing Joe Rutman with him. So you have Kazalowski first. Bickle is in second. Sprague has fallen back and taking over in the third position is Ron Hornaday. He's a full straightaway behind the two leaders. Hornaday in third, Corelli in fourth, Bliss in fifth, then Barfield six, number 99, up to seventh, moves Bound. Into eighth comes Rutman, and ninth on the field would be Michael Dockin with the tenth spot, Bray. That's Jack Sprague in tenth, and eleventh is Reigns. In twelfth is Jay Sodder. And these are unofficial. We have no scoring at the present time. So we're just kind of winding them up and bringing them to you as they come by. There's been no lapping yet. Everybody's on the lead lap so far. Deep into the race, 26 laps in. Everybody's on the same lap. Uh, Corelli having his problems here with Mike Bliss getting through on the outside. And closing up on Hornaday. Well, the leaders have taken off from this wow. group. There's a good bit of racetrack between them and first. Trouble up Yellow in turn out. three. Jay Sauter has taken Richard Childress' truck around for a circle. Lap 33 as the first caution of the day comes out. We'll take a quick break and be back with you here. 33 laps under green. The trucks are rolling at Monroe, Washington, and it's a great race. State Fairgrounds from the Duralude aerial platform here in Monroe, Washington. Take a look at what happened out here to Jay Sauter back on lap 33. They're working the 36. Gets in to Dan Press and number 75. Get a little bit of that one. Hmm. Maybe another look can tell. Everybody else seemed to have gotten by all right. Uh, let's see what we can see here. Oh, uh, just tight. Press and Sauter get into it together. Down to Steve Burns. Hey guys, you were talking about the front runners earlier. Butch Miller started 18th. He is now 12th. He said earlier that he might win this race. His strategy was, and this goes against the very nature of race car drivers, but his strategy was just to hang back and, and really just be conservative 
Again, that ties into the tire management, but he's trying to go slow so that he can go fast in the second half of the race. Let's go to Mike Hogwood. Some of these guys in the back are really loose. How loose is Morris said? So loose that when he came in, they put four rounds of bite in the car, plus a rubber inside the springs to try to tighten him up a little bit so he can hang on coming out of the corners here. A lot of these trucks really loose here. Let's talk about how they're going to restart. They're coming around a complete 37. I think they're one away from the get-go. First caution of the day here. So as the field rolls down out of turn number four, the big story. We have a Chrysler truck up in front, and they're going to put the yellow out another lap as they come across the line. Bob Keselowski will be your leader when they get the green flag. Bickle will be behind him. And then Ron Hornaday in number 16 is pulled right up. There's Hornaday. He'll be in third spot. Just behind him, it's Mike Bliss running in fourth with that ASE number two. And then Rick Corelli, who started on the outside pole, and Ron Barfield and the 99 and Chuck Bound. He's seventh. Bound is seventh. Rutman would be eighth, and that moves Michael Dockin doing a great job uh, in the Dana truck up into ninth. Sprague will be tenth. 18, Tony Raines in the yellow truck. He'll be 11th. 12th will be Butch Miller. And Butch Miller has been on a roll. Crawford will find himself in 13th. And then in 14th is Dan Press. And in 15th is that 02 truck. What a story there. Rick McRae out of Bakersfield, California. Big crash last year. He returned to Awful racing crash. last week. Did well uh, early on. Didn't finish the event, but he's back here racing. During the yellow flag, T.J. Clark, Stacy Compton, Boris said, Lance Norick all pitted. They are going to restart in the back or a lap down. And Boris said had to pit twice. He's loose all over the slot. He wanted to get that one, see if he could get it dialed back in. Pace truck is in. Field is ready. Coming down to complete 38. We're under green. Hornaday is on the charge. He comes back after Bickle into turn number one. They both hook it up on the inside. Here they come out of the hole, out of turn two and down the back straightaway. They close on Kazalowski in the 29. Bob Kazalowski, number 29, out of Michigan, stays in front. Look at Hornaday. Take it right down to the bottom and then some. Started all the way back in 16th spot and he's up to third. Hornaday has already won this year, single event. Apparently, T.J. Clark may have jumped on the flag, number 22, stop Joe Kendall. Back straight away, you have Kazalowski in front, Pickle is in second, Hornaday in third, Bliss riding fourth, Torelli in fifth, Barfield in sixth, Chuck Bound is seventh, and Rutman eighth. And down the straightaway they come, with Kazalowski pulling the field by two truck lengths this time. Boy, wow, is that thing wound up. He is really running. Gary Stanton, the sprint car midget guy, has built the motors in that truck. And last year, Gary Stanton, as an owner, won the USAC Silver oh! Bowl. Bliss stuffs it down on the bottom. Hello, full contact. This is short track racing, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> yeah, that's Stanton down in Kentucky. He built some great motors. And Kazalowski is the proof of the pudding right there as he leads this entire field. And what a great day for Chrysler fans out in front. Lap 41, scoring's up. We've got Kazalowski in the lead. Bickle, Bliss, Hornaday, Corelli, Barfield, those front runners. Great show. This is the view from Bliss. He is currently riding in third position. We are looking back at Ron Hornaday. Hornaday, one of the best restarters there is anywhere. He in the number 16 truck. He's not going to like this deal here. We don't have too many caution flags, so he does not get much of an opportunity to play that game. He does go through the gears. One, two, three, four. Gordy Arbiter from stick only builds the transmissions, and Hornaday is an absolute expert at restarts. But Kazalowski is the man of the moment. Here's Bickle back after him. Bickle just not giving away, biting, nipping away on the rear of that number 29 truck. Bickle trying the high side. He's got a birthday coming up on Tuesday, Rich Bickle does. Going to be, do I dare mention it? No. 36. <laughs> <laughs> well, that sounds like a Walter. Yeah. Yeah, Darrell was 36 for several years, yeah. wasn't he? Yeah. I think over a decade, Darrell Walter thrilled last week. They took the trophy from Portland, Oregon, down to Sonoma, California, to Sears Point, where he was, and they said he was just about in tears. Great victory. Been a while since 1920, uh, 1992. <laughs> well, here's Bickle on the uh, outside. Look at this. Even across, out of four for the lead, folks. 
Rich Bickle, number 17, throws it down into turn number one, and we got a new leader. This is the way, way he did it last week, too. He did it twice that way. Let's go to Steve Burns. Hey, Dick, I spoke to Darrell Waltrip on Wednesday and asked him how excited he was about watching the truck race when he was in Sears Point. And he said, Burns, I almost threw up. I couldn't do it. Matter of fact, he left his transporter where the satellite dish was hooked up, and Jeff Hamm and his crew chief had to drag him back in there to watch the end of it. Yeah, and he thought they were going backwards for a while. Hammond says, heck no, and they finally, what, they bet a nickel or two, and they forced Waldrop in there. I'm sure it was just a nickel or two. Okay, I'm sure it was a nickel or two for Daryl. Here's Mike Hogwood. We're down with Richard Petty, who many people know, drove a Dodge to a number of victories in Winston Cup racing. How about a Dodge running so well here today? It puts a smile on your face. Yeah, the whole thing's not the right one. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, they, they run good on these short tracks. They got enough handling to be able to overcome some of the horse fights. Now, you gave up going to Talladega to come here and support your team, 43 Jimmy Hensley. What's behind that? Well, yeah, well, you know, I already planned to come out here and train the race out in Talladega. And, uh, you know, it's just the second truck race I've been able to come to this year. So I want to come out and see how the boy's doing. How is your team doing? Hey, he can do a little bit better. I'll get him going a minute. All right, you can bet he will. Back back there in 14th position, I believe now. Jimmy Hensley. Huh. Rick Corelli getting back into it again. All the way back to 13th, though, Ken. They had not permitted themselves to even believe they could drop that far back. That was not the plan. Drop back a couple, yeah, but not that far. Now, as we go to a commercial break, let's recall the final outcome of the 1996 Napa Card 200 on this week's Bud Who Won. Hey, race fans, Budweiser asks, who won? May 11th, 1996, Evergreen Speedway. Starting from the pole, Truck 52 with Toby Butler doing the driving, held off Mike Bliss in number two early in the event. Starting further back were challengers Ron Hornaday Jr. in 16, Jimmy Hensley in 30, and number 17 with Bill Sedgwick at the wheel. But who won? Take a look at the contenders. The answer is coming up to win his second career NASCAR Truck Series race. Pole sitter Toby Butler ended up seventh after a tough fight with defending series champion Mike Skinner. Bill Sedgwick survived some tight encounters and went on to finish 10th. As the challengers fell by the wayside, Bliss and Hornaday Jr. continued a fierce duel to the end. Bliss dominated the race, leading 156 laps en route to his first win of the season. Who Won was brought to you by Budweiser, the king of beers. This Bud's for you. And right now you're riding with Mike Bliss looking from second place up at Rich Bick Bickle leading at lap 58 this time by. Let's remember that last week his crew chief uh, Barry Dotson was fishing for suckers. Remember that during yeah, the little rain delay? Well, he went out in the uh, Calamus River here in Oregon, or in Oregon, and picked himself up a 20-pound salmon. Did a little bit better uh, during the week between that race and this one. Yeah, that was one of his crewmen, David Willingham, who got the biggest one last year. But, of course, he's from L.A. That's lower Alabama. <laughs> this is down there near Pell City. And uh, those, those Alabama fishermen. I want to say hi to Toby Porter, who crashed last week in practice and cracked a vertebrae on his neck. He is watching this race, we are sure, has been fitted with a halo. They say he's going to be fine, but it's going to be a while before he races again. Hope you're liking this one, Toby. Look at that move. Barfield in the 55, the Tom Gloy truck, on the bottom, getting under Hornaday. Talk about a comer, this guy, Barfield. Let me tell you, you're going to hear about this kid, Barfield, for years and years to come. He has got all the right stuff. And Miller comes with him, and there's Hornaday with that grand old move. You take me, I'll take you. Hornaday puts the 16 back, and they slam against each other as they come off that second corner. Back up to 135, 140 miles an hour. Then they ease it down into turn number three. 100 mile an hour track for these trucks at Monroe, Washington. Butch Miller... His mom came up from Arizona, lives down there in retirement, and dad, having a heck of a good time today. Butch Miller's working on Barfield at the present time. The 55 of Barfield, lying fifth on the field, Miller in sixth. Here you see Hornaday just behind them, 
He's in seventh, and there's Rutman in eighth. Remember Rutman a week ago in that LCI truck? That remarkable show with Tammy Joe Curtin. They both crashed out with about seven, eight laps to go. Here he is back up in there. Tammy Joe took a provisional start, as did Rutman for this race. But Rutman has her wound up. Rubbing in the number 80 truck. Underneath Hornaday. Hornaday seems to be having trouble with his truck. He's not able to stay on the bottom, and as a result, there goes Rutman on the way by. Yeah, and I think I'm I spoke, misspoke there. Rutman did have a good starting position. He started, he started in 10th today. Qualified 10th in that number 80 truck. His first lap in qualifying last night would have given him a provisional for sure. It was a terrible first lap, and second lap was a whole lot better. Rutman on the move. Interesting strategy with that truck. They've got an extra bar inside the door so that when he slams into another truck or slams into the wall, it doesn't cave anything in. It keeps his wheels out of harm's way. Sprague to the inside, and he gets beneath Hornaday. Hornaday tries to get him back. But out of the hole, here they are, about a two. It's Hornaday. Looking like he's got the advantage as they move around. T.J. Clark. He's two laps down. T.J. lost one in the pits, and then he lost one by just not being fast enough. To Steve Burns. With John Motz and the crew chief around Hornaday. John, are you guys uh, having any kind of a problem? We're not really having a problem other than we're trying to save the tires. The tires are the biggest thing, and I think we've heard them a little bit. Uh, if we can just cool for a little while and try to come back, we'll be all right. We've got to try to loosen the truck up a little bit so we don't abuse the right front. Okay, John. 66 laps complete this time by. One caution thus far. And the number three truck. That's uh, being driven by Jay Sauter, was just lapped by Rich Bickle a year ago. They finished fifth out here in that number three truck, having their problems today, spinning early. Hornaday is back to ninth. Remember, he had gotten all the way up to third spot. Now he's backing up, and if they have indeed hurt the tires, there's no way you can unhurt tires, and they're going to have to struggle until they get to the halfway point. Just behind him, Chuck Bound, who took a big hit last week, Lost the rear end of the number 99 truck and fell from fourth to tenth in the standings. See that yellow truck? That's that youngster, Tony Raines. He's well back in the uh, center rookie standings, but he is a comer and he's moving up well. Right now he's got Kenny Irwin to deal with, and Kenny Irwin, that great star out of Indianapolis, Indiana, last down the inside and takes that 98 truck, the Revestus break, up another spot. Irwin was a provisional. He had a tough time getting into the show at all. Good thing he had enough points to make it. Well, he just took 12th away from Reigns. Somebody once said it's not where you start, it's where you finish anyway. Yeah. So. Yeah. Fifty-two is Toby Butler. Last year's pole sitter. Yeah. And she had they worked on that truck. They even took the welder and torches out this morning to try to make it faster. Up in front, Rich Bickle gets to get a little heat. And the man applying it right here, Mike Bliss. Gets good. Like your recreation, wide open, 600 horsepower. Welcome to Monroe, Washington, where we're watching Rich Bickle continue to throw that number 17 truck around looking for his second straight win five different winners in five different races this year they will trying to put the stopper on that just as it happened a year ago about this time Bickle is absolutely flying Ken he has begun to lap trucks at a furious pace he's just put Jimmy Hensley in Richard Petty's truck right there. The 43 has just gone a lap down. Bliss has also put him a lap down. Sauter in the three, you saw him spin earlier. He's having his hard time keeping up, and it will not be long before he is lapped as well. Only one caution thus far in the running of this event. This is a track where they run so well, even though it is a difficult short track. There's that Kenny Irwin truck making his way around Ron Hornaday. I think we need some time to work there. They say after about 40 laps, the tires go away. Hornaday looks like he's really fighting a handling problem. Kenny Irwin getting up around him here. And Toby Butler in the number 52. Butler's truck owned by Kenny Schrader. Got the pole here last year and has been searching the entire weekend for the speed he had last year. Just can't seem to find it. Hometown boy, Toby Butler, on the pole a year ago.
came home six getting around Ron Hornady in that Purolator truck. Looking back at Chuck Bound in the number 99. He had his problems last week. Broken differential. Changed it. Finished the race way down many laps off the pace. Here's Bound coming after Hornaday now. Back there, ninth and tenth on the field. They all know he's wounded. They're going to look for him. And what Hornaday has to do now is just hang on, not damage the truck, get to the halfway point. John Munson will throw some treachery at that thing. They'll make a lot of adjustments, put four new tires on it, and it'll be a whole new ball game. Look at Corelli in the number six who said outside of the... Whoa! Hornaday really in trouble and making a great save. That's worth looking at again sometime. Wow! He had that one sideways, taking the wind right through the side window. Picked it up and kept going. We mentioned Evergreen has the most caution-free laps of all the tracks in the series. 28 of 350, that's about 8%. They really get around this track beautifully. Last year, the last 94 laps, caution free. That yellow truck, Dave Resendez, he was a provisional, started all the way back in 30 spot. Right now, Resendez is running in 14th. He has passed about half the field here this afternoon. The Hardy truck out of Dawsonville, Georgia. Take another look at Hornaday getting sideways just a moment ago. He earns his money on this one, Kevin. Yeah, he does. Corelli on the inside of the six. 16, watch it. Turn. Hello. And at 100 miles an hour plus on old asphalt, that is a good save. Old asphalt, old tires. We're over 80 laps in now. They are now lapping the 18th place car, truck. I did it. <laughs> truck. <laughs> well, anyway, they got around Tony Roper out of uh, St. Peter's, Missouri in that... Uh, Concord tool truck. Hey, look at this number 18, Michael Dockin. Just past Tony Roper. Great story on, on Tony Roper and that blue number 31 truck. Roper has packed his wife, his possessions, and everything. He is moving himself to Charlotte to take up a career as a full-time race car and race truck driver. The wife hasn't even seen the house he has picked up, but she's ready to go. Roper said yesterday, I'm going to make it. I know I'm going to make it. Good thing he's got Michelle with him. She'll help. All right, we'll take a quick break and be back with you at Monroe, Washington, where it's Rich Bickle fighting it out for the lead with Bliss and Kazalowski. Been lapped. He's back in 15th position. Take a look at this little problem. Now take a look at the surface of that tire. There's a mark going around the inside that's not supposed to be there. That tire is supposed to be perfectly smooth. He's in tire trouble. Mm, and that breaks a little warm, too, even before halfway. Steve Burns. Hey, Dick, you're exactly right. I just spoke to John Monson, Hornaday's crew chief, and he said, we do not have any rubber left. And that is the problem. Coming up to the finish on the first half of the Craftsman Truck Race. Monroe, Washington, Hornaday in trouble. But Bickle is the story of the moment, showing 92 laps up on the board. Well, Bickle may be in trouble. Corelli yeah. in the sixth loses it and goes a lap down. Bickle is putting so much of this field away, putting them a lap down. Meanwhile, behind him, the two is in second position. That's Bliss. 29 Keselowski is in third. All this traffic, Ken. Yeah, it's brought them all together. Your leader is the 17, Bickle. And in this heavy traffic, it has allowed Bliss to pull up and Keselowski. And Dockin is right in there as well. He is running in fourth position. Look at this jam right in front of the leader. And look at Bound trying to stay in that lead lap. He realizes that the number 17 truck is there. He's in the pocket trying to get oh. out. Oh, we got to spin. Corelli spinning, that could be a break for Bound. He's into the outside wall. Yellow comes out as they come around to complete lap number 95. Here's that 17, here's the 99, gunning down to the inside, trying to stay in the lead lap. Barfield in the 55 and Bound. And at the line, it looks like two may have jumped it. It did, it looked like Bliss had him at the Bliss line. Bliss got him. Bliss, the Ford. Bickle, the Chevy, Kazalowski, the Dodge, all mixing it up here as we get down to that halfway flag. Want to say hello and welcome to all you NASCAR fans that have been following the Winston Cup race at Talladega, Alabama today. Mark Martin, congratulations, two in a row in that Winston 500 for Mark and for Jack Roush, huh? 
Earnhardt in second today. Yeah, Bobby, Bobby Labonte Bonnie third. third. How about John Andretti? Ah, oh, he's good. Look at this. Here we go. Round and round. Tires are all worn right now. And uh, look like Corelli and Dockin just got together. Everybody trying so hard to stay on the lead lap. The air is showing through on a lot of these tires as we get down to the end of the first half. 97 complete next time by. And that caution was a real break for several guys. Barfield was about ready to go a lap down. So was Resendez, Doug George, and a whole bunch of others. And this caution flag means that they get to going, go to the back of the pack and stay on the lead lap. Kip. Going green next time by, and we see Bickle deployed in front of Bliss on this restart. No rubber left on any of those trucks. And up there in third, Kazalos. They're not going to go. They're going to wait one more lap. They're going to get it lined up a little bit better. Going to hold it up one more lap. Well, we saw that Bliss truck come to the line on the inside. Morris said fits another time. He's in the rear end of this field trying to get anything going for that number 44 truck today. You saw Hornaday. He's obviously not pleased with his truck. I bet Earnhardt's watching this right about now, Ken Squire. Yeah, I bet he is, too. Well, let me tell you what, Dale Earnhardt. Your driver has done a great job today, but when the tires go away, as you well know, there's not much a fella can do. Lap trucks on the inside. Trucks on the lead lap are on the outside. And they're showing them in that order. A Bickle first, then in second, Mike Bliss. Have a Chevy first, Ford second, Dodge third as we get ready to turn them loose one more time. And Michael Dawkin in the 16 truck, having himself a day up there in fourth for the Dana folks. Started all the way back in 17th. Here's Kenny Allen now stalled on the racetrack. He was another of the provisional starters. You saw him last week with an all red truck. He demolished that one. This truck was a backup for another team early in the season. They didn't even bother to change the paint. Just brought it out. And Kenny Allen is sitting silent on the racetrack in the third turn area. They're just trying to get everybody all lined up. That's what this is all about. And I think he's waiting. Yeah, I he think is. He's just waiting on the field to come by, pick up the spot, and get ready for a go. Spotters all helped in getting the trucks lined up. They're going to go green, green this time around. Up. We have 97, so there's about three laps of green flag racing to get us to, or two laps to get us to that halfway mark. They bring them in at 101. I think they throw that caution about 100. Here they are, back to the line. Truck is in. Here's your start. Nickel in first. Hornaday scoops right up through the middle. Gets around that lap truck of Allen. Gets in front of Bliss, but it's not going to hold. He's loose. You know Hornaday wants and to make that And that's a big break for Nickel. Yeah, Nickel just going to take off as all this stuff is going on behind him. Bliss's main job now is don't crash that number two truck. Hornaday motioning to Bliss. Bliss goes up on the outside, comes around Hornaday as they come by. Yeah, Hornaday knows he can't hold them off, so the smart thing to do is just keep the truck hold. And Kazalowski gets backed up in all of that. The guy on the move is Dockin. Bliss is in second. Dockin comes into third. Butch Miller rolls up for fourth. Sprague is in fifth and back to sixth. Goes Kazalowski in the 29. The 18 truck. That is young Michael Dockin, and what a race he's having. Lived in a Freightliner motel all last summer with his dad up in the front of that thing for five months. That's another one of those Stanton Motors. Ah, here inspire. comes Miller down to the inside. Tries to slice it on through under Hornaday. He's doing everything he can to change his luck. Last night, Butch Miller shaved his mustache. <laughs> so maybe it'll fix things a little bit. Oh, look at Hornaday, way up. He's just letting everybody go by. Nothing he can do to hang onto that truck at all. Caution down. Caution down for halfway. So we'll go to the halfway break. Halftime here at Monroe, Washington. Rich Bickles got it on him right now. Can he hold them for the final half? That's part of the story we'll be following here at halftime today on TBS. Washington, Ron Hornaday having his problems. The 1995 winner of this event looked just moments before the flag came out for the halfway mark. That's Hornaday on the outside, Butch Miller on the inside. Look at the smoke coming off Hornaday's truck. Truck wobbles a little bit, and then we had the caution flag. Let's go to Steve Burns. With Ron Hornaday, who's been really battling it. Ron, what's going on? Well, I just didn't judge the track right, I guess. We're just uh, a little tight. We tore the right front tire off it. 
one of them things. We'll get the Napa Chevrolet. We're going to go ahead and uh, something stupid here. We're going to flop the front spring from left to right and see if that'll make the thing turn. Uh, we've been like this since we unloaded and we just can't figure it out. But we'll get the Napa Chevrolet. We'll see what we can do for him. Okay, Ron, thanks. So it wasn't anything as serious as that smoke might have made one wonder about. Had the whole crowd kind of gasping and coming to their feet. Here's Mike Hogwood. We're with Mike Bliss, who had a really strong first half. Mike, what about this truck first half of the race? It was real good early on. Then at the end, we got pretty tight. We just wore the tires out. Um, Rich is running fast. The Dodge guys were coming up. They saved their tires. Looks like better than we did. Traffic's pretty tough out there, and I, I think Golden Green, Ron's going to probably want to get his lap back and a few other ones. We're just going to adjust a little bit, just to make it turn a little better and get off the corner a little better. But all in all, the AC Ford's pretty dang good today. What's your strategy going to be, your strategy in the second half? The same as the first half. We, we're up front, just try to protect second place and then try to get first there at the end there. But you won't get around uh, the uh, 17 truck early on. It, it, we'll just have to wait until he wears his tires out and ours may be better. To Steve Burns. Rich Mike Bliss was just saying uh, his strategy was to see if your tires wear out, but you guys look so strong right now. These guys two weeks ago gave me a truck to drive. This year's diehard Chevrolet. It, it, we took it to Hickory. It was awesome last weekend. I can't say enough of these guys what they gave me here. This is by far the best truck that I've ever sat in. I mean, the average driver could take this truck and run up front. I don't know what they give me, but by far this is the best thing I've ever had. It looks like your biggest problem is lap traffic. Oh, I'll tell you what, I, I've got myself stuck out there a couple times. I thought, man, this is not a good situation, but uh, fortunately nobody got into anybody and spun anybody out in front of me. I thought for sure I might get a, got tore up, but uh, right now everything's looking good. I'm just going to run to, you know, sit steady pace and, you know, racing these old short tracks like Pensacola and Nashville and the track was bad. You learn how to beat baby that throttle, and that's what's run, making us run good. All right, let's just go to Ken Squire. And it's Bickle picking up that $1,000 Gatorade award for halfway. <laughs> Now our Mopar mid-race report. There you see it. Three leaders, four lead changes thus far, Dick. Just two caution flags. That's about what we expected. Yep. Bickle has led the most laps at 62. Keselowski in the Dodge, 28. Corelli lost to, uh, the lead lap. He's a lap down now. He led 11. It was Dan Press truck. But all 32 are still out there, and that third caution was the one that marked it as halfway in this Napa 200, Napa Card 200 at Monroe, Washington. Race number two of this series up here in this beautiful part of the world. Down in Talladega today, they had a beautiful finish. When it was all over, Mark Martin was out in front in this five-car shootout. At the end of 500 miles, that's Earnhardt right there in second. Trying for the inside, Bobby Labonte hangs it in, tries for a move. He stays and winds up third, John Andretti who started up in that front row, got himself fourth, and Jeff Gordon fifth. Hey, don't forget Superstation TBS. The 600 starts at 6 o'clock on May the 25th, Sunday afternoon. We'll be on the air about 5.30 with our free rate show. Superstation TBS 600, the next biggie on the Winston Cup Tour. The NASCAR Craftsman trucks for this afternoon are having their own fine day. And Steve Burns can tell us more as the field rolls out for half number two. Butch Miller started 18th, but right now he's fourth. Butch, you guys are running great. What changes did you make? You know, the Chevrolet's been running great since yesterday. We just had a, a stupid guy qualify this thing. And he took a, a fifth-place qualifying truck and, and put it into the 18th spot. But this thing's good enough to where uh, I expect to be drinking old Milwaukee and Victory Circle when it's over. All right, that boy, Butch. Let's go to Mike Hogwood. Michael Dockin getting ready to put the wind in that up. Michael, what are your thoughts here for the second half? Uh, the Dana Dodge run real good today. Uh, the guys have really done a real good job. They've been working hard all year long. The truck's been good every week. We're finally getting some breaks, and hopefully we can just save the car truck for the end of the race there. He says his chassis is the key. It has been smooth, running great all day, and he is excited about the second half of this race. Looks like he's about 14 years old. <laughs> Toby Butler section here today. <laughs> That's about three quarters of the grandstands, yeah. that little section, Ken. As we take a look at the rundown out here this afternoon. Yeah, Bickle on the lead and Bliss in second spot. Dockin in one of those dodges is third. Butch Miller in fourth. He's the stupid guy he was talking about, did the bad qualifying run. He's been mad at himself ever since. Jack Sprague. And, and we look at the 11 through 20 there. Stacy Compton with a good run today. Tammy Joe Kirk from up back up into seven 
17th thus far. Hornaday in trouble in a lap down after that first half. He's got his work cut out. Yeah. Corelli started on the outside pole. He's all the way back to 21st. He's down a lap. Refner down a lap. Lance Norick down a lap. Wow. Final page. Morris said they've been in and out all day trying to make that number 44 truck begin to work. T.J. Clark had a handful from the very beginning. Okay, field coming around. Another lap before they get ready to turn them loose out here today. Hey, no, your NASCAR. Today's race, NASCAR, 25 officials out here. They've got six in scoring and timing. And of course, they have a dandy starter down here below us. But the guys that really count are those guys along pit road. 13 pit road inspectors who do a grand job. You know, we're talking about Boris said all the way in the back. He had a unique strategy. He called his truck owner, Ernie Irvin, and said, how do I get around this place? It was only Boris's eighth ever oval start today. And Ernie said, try the hippopotamus approach. And Boris said, well, what's the hippopotamus approach? And Ernie said, when you get to where you figure you really ought to get on the brakes, he said, say the word hippopotamus and then put your foot on the brake. <laughs> and Boris said, I don't know, this is a tough place on tires. Ernie said, try it. And Boris said, well, I don't know if it's gonna work or not, but we're sure gonna give it a whirl. I'm not gonna try to conserve anything. The Thir hippopotamus approach, uh, Ernie, it didn't work. <laughs> 13 trucks continue up in the lead lap. Those hippos are having a happy time out here at the present yeah. time. Well, can anybody catch Rich Pickle in that 17? He won it last year, just like a year ago. Five races, five different winners, and then the sixth one had a repeat. Happy with Pickle today and win back to back. Make Darrell Waltrip very happy. Right behind him, Mike Bliss, just as consistent. Of course, he has the overall record. Did it in a sprint car on this racetrack. He is going to be tough. And that young Michael Dockin with one lap. I'm going to watch this lad in time to come. He, he looks maybe 14 years of age. He's the one that uh, he and his dad were out there sleeping in the truck for five months last year, and they were the ones that were basting turkeys. They would cut a uh, Coca-Cola canister, the one with the syrup in it, pour the peanut oil in the bottom, and then they would cook their turkey for the week. Uh, they were asked by a couple of motels not to do that in their parking lot anymore. And of course, if they had made a mistake, they'd fire that turkey right through the motel wall. Okay, we're just about ready to go. Bickle. For the lead, number 17, his mom looking on as his scorer today. Mike Bliss, mom's here in second spot on this Mother's Day weekend. Ron Hornaday's mother, they flew her in. Brian Refner's mother, a couple of aunts out here, had a little dinner party. And lo and behold, out of the next room, walked his mom. Didn't expect to see her. But you know, Time. but you know, the mothers of these drivers, so many of them are here on a week-in, week-out basis. This is not just because it's Mother's That's Day. Right. Uh, these folks really support their sons in their racing effort. These are racing families. Yes, they are. Spend a lot of time at racetrack as we get ready to go green. Yeah, we'll, we'll see if Rich Bickle can we'll contain this field as we get ready. 32 strong, still out here ready to go. Hornaday is going to try to get that number 16 truck back in that lead lap. Mike Bliss hangs right on to 17. Michael Dockin in third. Rocking up into that spot around some lap trucks. And Miller comes with him in the number 20. Back there in fifth is Jack Sprague. Has a lot of six in the Dodge, number 29, that had an outstanding qualifying run here and started third on the day. Here comes Bliss to the outside. He's not waiting. Chevy on the inside, Ford on the outside as they hammer down into turn one. And here comes Hornaday, scoops up underneath, takes out a couple of lap trucks, moves himself up to challenge, trying to get that lap back right now in number 16 in the grass. Yeah, look at Hornaday. He is on a mission. He wants to, he's got to get that lap back if he's to have any hope for a strong finish here this afternoon. That means he's got to get by the two of Bliss. He's got to get by the 17 of Bickle, and then he'll be at the back of the pack. And all he's going to do is just, well, pass just on everybody. He's going to jump in this game. And I would not write him off. Last year's winner, Mike Bliss goes high. Hornaday to the inside. And Bliss is able to close the gate. Crowd's loving this. Dockin, meanwhile, has fallen back a bit. Butch Miller underneath him with that white truck. Number 20 pulls up into fourth, and Doc and pinned on the outside. He'll suffer for that one. They've Bickle. got 
got Dockin on the high side, and Sprague will take advantage. Bickle just running nice and smooth out there. He doesn't really have anybody to contend with, at least at the moment. Butch Miller's really got that position, Ken, in the number 20 truck. Matted himself over a poor qualifying run, shaved his mustache last night. Came out here from 18, the position he has started in three times this year, and gotten himself up into, where is he, third spot. And he's working on Rick McRae, a lap down at the present time. That 0-2, that's Rick McRae, whose two sons and daughter are a major part of that race team, and what a job they've done. They qualified 14th for today's show. Here's Miller down on the inside, McRae, an old veteran. Of course, his dad was a great racer in Southern California. Well-known name, but Butch Miller, yeah, he is mission sent at the present time, and he's bringing Sprague with him. Dockin has finally found himself a spot on the inside of the number 18 truck, that blue-white red delivery. Butch Miller has been Mr. Consistency this year. He's got a second, a third, a fourth, a ninth. Incredibly, he has not led a lap with all that running he has done up front. Started 18th on the field. Miller in the white, number 20. Likes this racetrack and running it well right now. There you see the front of the field with Hornaday trying to get that lap back. Remember, he is a lap down. Tires went completely off the number 16 truck early in the corner. So as you watch the Hornadays on the tail end of the lead lap, and they're wow. now. Whoa! Hornaday, Hornaday. lapping himself. That brought the crowd to his feet. That's going to put him into that lead lap in 13th position. Exactly what he had to do. Now, if he can get himself a caution flag so he doesn't have to burn up those tires trying to catch up with the back of the pack. But what he really needs right now is a caution. Unlapped, Ron Hornaday sets his sights on trying to draw away from this field. Boy, is he doing three truck lengths here in the main straightaway. Hornaday is running right at the bottom, Ken. There's just about nobody running as low as he is. He's Watch those left side tires that go way down in the bottom. Nickel and Bliss, first and second. Miller comes to third. Sprague roars back into fourth. Dockin is in fifth. And maintaining six is Bob Kazalowski. Only two cautions so far. Four last year, four the year before. And Hornaday needs one right now. Right now. The sooner the better for Ron Hornaday. And look at Miller coming up in that white number 20 truck on the bottom with Sprague behind him. Four trucks for the lead. This is lap 111 of 200. And I think they're willing, at least the Vickel outfit, to back it up just a little. And that's giving Miller and Sprague a chance to get into this thing. Back there in third and fourth. Bliss willing to ride with Vickel and save those tires as long as he can. Hornaday just trying to drive away. Remember Hornaday chain springs left to right, try anything to get this thing to work. Well, they can't be too conservative because that green number 24 back there is on the move, too. And here comes Miller to the inside on Bliss. Butch Miller is there. Miller making the move. His mother, Jean Miller, will be cheering him on right now. Came all the way up from Green Valley, Arizona. and Didn't want to see him finish out of the top. Boy, what a show he's putting on. The barbecue last night. And dad and wife, the yeah. whole family was there. Yeah. Butch's real name, right, by the way, Henry. You know why they call him Butch? Because he's Henry III, so he named his son Henry, the fourth, I guess that would be. Yeah. Butch Miller was a racer from a young age. He had a great car owner, his mother. The problem was, in those days, she didn't know it. Miller, fifth in points coming from into this race. The height of two years old, he wanted to be a race driver, believe it or not. And when he graduated from high school, he had a huge trophy in the locker room that he couldn't bring home because he was dragging my car. And he was very good at it because he won. But mom didn't know. Bet you mom knew. 27th in this race a year ago. Today, Butch Miller, number 20, challenges for the lead, bringing Jack Sprague with him. Great truck race, NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series, Monroe, Washington. We're down to lap 116. Only a couple of official cautions, plus that one for halfway. 
Beautifully driven front four. There you see them all framed up together. Butch Miller, who's had a lot of experience, but loves this truck racing. He's tried everything. Coopersville, Michigan campaigner right now is being challenged, and it's Sprague around him for third spot. Jack Sprague mixing it up and getting back into this thing big time. Remember, Sprague has never won one of these truck races on a short track. Five wins on tracks a mile long or longer. And when you look at the statistics, they say that Sprague is the mile and up expert. That's why they call him Mile Track Jack. Walking in yesterday, he said, you're going to have to change after this weekend. I'm going to be half mile Jack. 23rd two years ago, 12th last year, just about halves it every season. So this is the year Sprague ought to win it. Huh. We'll see. Stay with us. One hundred twenty five of two hundred laps completed this time. Diralu aerial platform showing you the Evergreen State Fairground six tenths of a mile here just north of Seattle and take a look at what happened just moments ago. Jack Sprague back there in third spot. He may not be a short track racer but he sure looks like one there up to second spot as he passes Mike Bliss. And here's how they're deployed at the present time. There you see Bickle, number 17, in first, and Jack Sprague right there in second. Here's Mike Hogwood. This is Connor. This is Connor, crew chief on the 24, is willing to try anything to get the short track program going. Earlier this morning, he spray painted a number 24 in the back of his head. Only problem is, you can't see it. It didn't take. Something's up with Dennis's hair, so Dennis said, to heck with this. Okay, here's the deal, guys. If we win this short track race today, I'll shave my head, and you guys can have the honors of doing it. That's got the team pretty fired up as well here, the Steve Burns. Mike, and I also talked to Dennis Conner about the changes they made at the halfway. They took a spring rubber out of the right rear to affect the handling prior to the race. They didn't change that much from Portland, so they're actually running a pretty similar setup. Here's Sprague working in the back of Rich Bickle. Uh, he has his team fired up. He also has his wife fired up. <laughs> Gail Connor is our scorer. And she says that he may have the opportunity to ride home with the crew or by himself if he shaves his head this afternoon. They win this race. Ah, uh, there's a lot of drama here in Monroe, Washington today. Jack Sprague in second spot. Rich Bickle going for two in a row. Won that tough old race at Portland just seven days back continues to lead but look at Sprague hang right on and look to the inside Bickle won't let him in you know Ken we talked about Sprague's numbers last year he led 766 laps less than 70 of them on short tracks this year coming into this race he has led 356 know how many on short tracks goose egg none hasn't led a lap yet if he gets by Bickle it'll be his first short track lap led in 97 it's not that he can't win or run fast on a short track in 94 he won 21 of 22 races on a short track in North Carolina here's Rich Bickle out in front he sat on the pole today if you're just joining us he broke all the track records broke Toby Butler's record qualified at 23 164 100.337 miles per hour. 14 trucks broke the record. Look at Sprague, still looking to hammer down on the inside and move through. The old record was 98.8, new record 100.3. The 17 truck of Darrell Waldrop pulled it off last night. Some very dramatic qualifying, and Rick Corelli also broke the 100 mile per hour barrier around the six tenths of a mile track. And Corelli's number six, which it backed up, seems to be moving toward the front again. But here's where the confrontation is it's up front for the lead. It's Bickle versus Sprague, and 14,000 folks are galvanized by this one here at Evergreen. This is neat. It really is. Rick Hendrick owns the number 24 truck, so there's a lot of Winston Cup running right up in front here this afternoon at Evergreen. Bickle has had things pretty much his own way all day long. Started on the pole, has by far led the most laps, but Sprague is not going to give up. He is all over Bickle. And here is third spot. That is number two, Mike Bliss. Just behind him in fourth is Dockin. Dockin in that blue number 18, and back in fifth, is Kazalowski and Bob Kazalowski carries the Chrysler colors up into that fifth. Remember, he had his best finish just a week ago in Portland, Oregon, in this same number 29 truck. He's looking stout. 
Yeah, Dodges are fourth and fifth right now, Ken. No Dodge has ever won in this series. And look at Dockin closing in on the two of Bickle, or uh, the two of Bliss. It, this is the 50th race in this series of the 49 held so far. Chevys have won 37. Fords have won 12. Dodge, none so far. Pretty interesting Napa field standings as you look back through the field. Corelli is on the roll. He's beginning to move back up through here. We saw him back way up, but now he's up to 14th. He's back just on the tail end of the top 20. Ha, ah, here's Sprague. Found a lap truck in front of him, tried to put it to his advantage. Who is that, Clark, the yep. 23 down on the inside? Yeah, T.J. Clark. Driving instructor at the Bondurant School. Lap 137, complete. Rich Bickle. Got his money for his first car from his beer. Caution. Plant. Caution is out. And there's debris on the racetrack. A piece of metal down by the low side. Look at this. Here they are racing to the line. And as they come to the stripe, you see the 24 in front of the 17. We'll see if that holds up when we come back on the other side of a commercial break. Rich Bickle and Jack Sprague going at it here this afternoon on Superstation TBS. Bickle, Rich Bickle leads out here in Monroe, Washington, and that Sears diehard truck having a great day. There's the boss right there, his mom, Jackie, 21 years scoring, cheerleading, so much energy. Let's get out of Mike Hogwood. Ron Barfield driving the 55 truck today, and his mom, Dee, is right here. She's only missed two races in his entire life, and when he got the call this week, you said, heck, I'm going to Seattle with you, right? That's right. Uh, I thought everybody spent Mother's Day like this. I didn't know there was any other way. And what about your son out there today? Oh, he's doing great. We love this truck series. It's sort of a, a, a release from uh, the competition in Bush, and we just love it. I, I came over here to try to find you. I can't ever find you. You say you're, you're too nervous to stay in one spot. I'll probably walk about three miles a race. <laughs> Typical mom. D. Barfield out of South Carolina. She had a brand new Cadillac a few years ago. It got 24 miles per gallon. Son Ron went to work, said he wanted to do a little stuff with it, wanted to drive it. When he got done, she got about 14.1. He claimed he didn't do a thing to the motor. <laughs> but boy, would that Cadillac run. There's Ron Barfield right now, settling down, getting ready to go. What a run he has had today. Currently still in that lead lap, number 55 in ninth place. Prestone race recap at the present time. There you see the lap leaders thus far in the event. Bickle, Kazlowski, and the rest of the crowd. Pace truck has him in order. And Hortaday has unlapped himself. He's at the back of the field, but now he's got his shot. Up there in the top ten, three Chevys, five Fords, and a couple of Dodges ready to turn this one loose another time. We're going to get a green flag light out on the pace truck. Bickle, your leader, he's also your points leader. Sprague in second is second in points. So they don't have to just think about winning the race. They have to think about finishing it because championship is surely on the minds of both of these men as we come down for a green. And it's out. Chris Morgan puts it on him. Starter Chris Morgan has him underway once again. This is lap 141. Bickle got a nice start there. Yeah, Sprague so. stuck on the outside of the six. Corelli, Corelli surely wanted his lap back, didn't get it. Held the 24 of Sprague up for a little while, but oh, here he comes. Oh, mile, mile track jack on the bottom. Mike Bliss back behind Corelli's lapped truck in third spot. Docking back in fourth on that restart. Then in fifth, Bob Casalosco. George Miller has fallen to six. Rutman is in seven. Bickle in the 17 has never won a touring series championship. Says in the past, he's always gone for the money wherever it was. He's headed there. Right now, the money is in front, and he's got Sprague on the bottom. For the lead, Jack Sprague, even across with Bickle. Sprague's going to lead, yep, lead his first short track lap of 1997. Remember, they score them by that white line right there as they come by, except at the start finish. They score them back and forth. 
Right, so except for the very last lap. Very last lap is right time. in front of the home grandstand here. The rest of it's in front of the scoring stand, which is up in four, except for the official finish, which is right at the midpoint of the start finish line. Here's Hornaday cutting through the field. Remember, he comes from a lap down. What's it look like? 12th? 13th? Yeah, 12th now, yeah. On the whoa, on the bottom, I guess. Way downstairs. Just rolling through traffic. Toby Here he Butler. comes around that purolator truck of Toby Butler. He's the next victim. Last year's pole sitter, big favorite out here, won a ton of races on this track. Yeah, they announced Butler's name and this grandstand erupts. They're not going to be happy if Bickle or if uh, today gets by him on the inside. Right after our race today, WCW Wrestling. Tonight at 7 o'clock here on Superstation TBS. Take you over to Three River Stadium. Trouble oh, up we in got turn a big one. Crash down here in turn one. We've collected one, two, three trucks. Boris Sad is in it. Rick McRae's 02. Looks like Lance Norwick. And I think that's Kenny Allen up against the wall. Gensman's involved in it as well. Brandon Butler. That's oh, Norwick's on it. Fire! Norwick's truck is on fire. You're riding in a truck that's on fire. Look at the fire underneath. He probably doesn't know. His spotter is going to tell him for sure he's going to have to look for a fire extinguisher. He's going to stop right at the fire truck. You see it right now. Heading for Norwick's truck. He's going to leave out of here. Wow. Hot box on number 90. Norwick bails out. He's all right. For a guy who follows that cool sport of hockey, he had himself a hot time here in Monroe, Washington. Lance Norwick. Not happy about that one. Let's take a look again at what happened down here in turns one and two. We'll take a look at this incident going into the corner. Collecting them up. Hard running here at Monroe. Lap 149 of 200. Aerial, aerial platform giving you a little look of Monroe, Washington and this race facility where this race is uh, under caution because of this incident in turn one. Dark is the guy who was on fire. He's about in the middle of this and he's about to slam the wall with the right front. Bam. And then he's going to try to drive out of this thing. Get another look at it. Here we go. We're going down the front straightaway right now. It all happens going into the first turn. Here we go. You're riding with Brandon Butler. See Boris Shedd going around backwards. Rick McRae in the 02. Wham. There's, Lance There's Norwick. Norwick right there. Wow. He is really on fire, Ken. They must have ruptured an oil line. He's as hot as those Philadelphia Flyers that he says is going to win the Stanley Cup this year. Hmm. Tough one. Back out, the hood's up on the number 90 as they come around. Now, there is a vision problem for sure. Here's Steve Burns. And Ken, we're in the backstretch here with Billy Woodruff, the crew chief for Lance North. Billy, uh, what started the fire? Is Lance okay? Uh, as far as I could tell, when he got hung up in that wreck over, they probably knocked a fuel pump or knocked a oil line off of it. That's about it. But Lance is okay? Oh, yeah. He didn't even know he was on fire. But the truck's not so okay. No, no, I got to go work on it. Thanks, Billy. Thank you. Tell you, cool customers, this Lance Norwick has won. This guy is going to make himself into a real racer in this truck series in years to come. Guy to watch for sure. Take a quick break and be back with you again. 2,000 in this grandstand here in Monroe, Washington, enjoying the Craftsman NASCAR truck series. It's been a dandy race thus far. There is Butch Miller's number 20. Let's go down to Mike Hogwood. Butch Miller made a stop on pit road. He was really bad loose, still on the lead lap, but had fallen back. So the crew made a decision, bring him down on pit road, stay on the lead lap. We're under caution, tighten it up a little bit. Let's go back out and when we get green, try to gain some more positions. He'll be running 12th as they get ready to take green. And Ron Hornaday made a pit stop. Sure did, and so did a lot of other people. Brian Refner, Boris said made pit stops. They came in too early. They're going to have to start at the longest line when we go green. And we'll talk about Hornady again in a moment. Upcoming, the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Races on Saturday. Uh, they'll be on May the 24th in Odessa, Missouri. Then on May the 31st, look for them up there at that beautiful mile track in Loudon, New Hampshire, New Hampshire International Speedway. 
hey, June 6th is going to be a dandy. That's a Saturday. And they're going to be at Texas at that great new track out there that Jordan Smith has created. June the 21st, look for them in Bristol, Tennessee. That, that was where Kazalowski went upside down a year ago. Look for the action there. July the 5th, got to tell you, that Milwaukee show is unbelievable. That's Saturday, July the 5th in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Then on to Louisville, Kentucky. That, too, is a Saturday event. And the 19th. Colorado National out there in Denver. Ron Hornaday is the story of the moment. He was back on pit road. They're up to something. Yeah, they said they poured water on the tires, and that is a way to cure the tires. The, if the tire is softer than you might like to have it, you pour a little water on it. When it's hot, it gets a little bit harder, and that can help. Uh, he did not lose a lap. He's still on the lead lap. And I'll tell you what, Ken, just about half the field has been in. Randy Tolsma, Tony Roper, Rick McCray, Butch Miller, uh, Jimmy Sauter, Hornaday, Hensley, Resendez, and Chuck Bound all have been in. Let's go to Steve Burns. Uh, Dick, I can add to the Ron Hornaday situation. In addition to uh, putting water on the tires to cool them down, they took air out of the right front and half a round of wedge out of the right weir rear. They have been fighting a terrible push from the time this race started. We saw Jay Sauter come in right side tires. He was involved in that crash up in turn two, head sideways, and so was the 66 Rentner. Uh, back to Mike Hogwarts. And Jay Souter did get a NASCAR approved tire change. He does have new tires on the right side, but uh, they're concerned that the toe-in problem, it, it's been in a little bit, and so that truck is gonna be really tough for Jay Souter to handle when we go back green. That Souter's tire there? Well, man, if it is, that's an approved tire change. That certainly was an approved tire change. Yeah. They don't let you change tires under either caution or under green here unless there's a problem. That's part of NASCAR's approach to keeping the cost of this series down. There's a couple ways to put money in a racer's pocket. One way is to hand them a lot of money. Another way is to keep them from spending it. That's the tire rules reason. Hey, coming up tonight, a couple of division leaders are going to go at it. Three River Stadium, Pittsburgh Pirates and the Braves. They're both up there going for it. And you'll see it tonight. Starts at about 7 o'clock here on Superstation TBS. There's Jay Sauter's ring back out again. A little beaten up. 34 year old not had a good day today first half went against him and then the second half problem in this five car bust out here in turns one and two you know he's taken over a tough ride to have because the guy who had that before mike skinner won the championship with it eight races in 95 eight races in 96 he won and of course Sauter wanted to get in that thing and win and win and win will lind is the team manager and it just told him calm down our day will come. It's going to take a little while for everybody to get used to each other, get with the program, but everything is together. All the pieces are here. We will win. One lap to green. 155 complete. 156. They'll get back and get racing. Lining them up, and as they do, you'll have Sprague in front and Bickle following in second. Michael Dockin will take third. Bliss will be in fourth. Kazalowski, the number 29, in fifth. Rutman will be in sixth. Looks to me like Kenny Irwin may be up there in seventh. From the rear today, Kenny Irwin, the seventh spot with the number 98, and then in eighth, Ron Barfield. Tom Gloy has to be smiling this afternoon about Barfield's performance. Bill Elliott certainly gave him a hot tip on that. He's in 10th, another guy from all the way at the back of the pack who's worked his way forward. Second in those rookie standings are third and doing a great job this year. Compton brings that rig of his around, and we're ready to go racing once again. Chuck Bound back there on the tail end of that lead lap. Resendez is just in front of him. That's 12th and 13th. Resendez and Bound, respectively, as we go back to green. What a start Jack Sprague got. He just took off from the outside. 17, Bickle wasn't able to keep up with him. Sprague is running off. He's got to run between himself and Bickle. Hemi Joe Kirk there in the number seven. She's on the bottom. She's another one that started all the way in the back. She is 16th. She's a lap down. Hornaday from 11th now. There he is, Ron Hornaday. Cool those tires. Put the garden hose right to them. Will it make a difference? We'll find out here in about the next 40 laps to decide this race. Looks to the inside, then the outside of Butch Miller in the number 20. Butch 
Miller also pitted on that break. 23 laps have been run under caution. Not very many. Compared to last week, we had, what, nine caution periods? Really get around this track well. Rick Pirelli just on the tail end. Today, working on Toby Butler. This is a good race. The six truck of Corelli is a lap down, but he has been working hard on Jack Sprague to try to get his lap back. Certainly has seen what Hornaday has been able to do. He started on the outside front row in that number six, lost a lap early on in the first half. Now he's in position to be able to take it back if he can just get by Jack Sprague. Nickel back there in third, or rather in second, a lap down on the field, but in second place. Give you a field summary here. Here they come, thrashing down out of four. Corelli trying to make that lap up. Dickel just saving those tires, but he's got to go in about another 20 about another 10 laps. That'll get him to 171 if he has any intention of making it back to back wins out here in the Northwest. 14 trucks still on the lead lap. Resendez is the last guy on the lead lap. Well, here comes Bickle on the outside. As the six, Corelli starts to fall back. Not able to get it done, getting his lap back. Well, Corelli's going to lose it. Uh, he's going to make it here. Yeah, Bickle's got him. College try. Corelli had to make that work, and he didn't. Here's where the struggle is. Ah, it, it is a struggle, kid. Butch Miller in the 20, Hornaday in the 16, fight it out. Butler in the 52 has been part of this thing for many laps as well. This is not the way to conserve your tires, by the way. Whoa! Miller came together right there with Hornaday. Miller on the bottom in the 20. Stacy Compton ahead of him in the 86. Toby Butler in that 52. Tight running. Six tenths of a mile track. If you're just joining us, two trucks broke 100 miles per hour in qualifying for this event. Rick Corelli on the outside of the front row and Rich Bickle with a new track record. Well, here we go. This is for the lead right now. Last week, Bickle took the lead two times on the outside. Let's go to Steve Burns. Dick for Dave McCarty, the crew chief for Rich Bickle. It looks like Rich has caught back up to the 24. Yeah, he's caught back up. He laid back a little bit. We're trying to stay the tires, and the diehard Chevrolet has been running great all day. The crew's done a great job. We're just right now trying to conserve as much tires as we can because you know that's the key going to be in this race. Okay, thanks, Dave. And Michael Dockin in the Dana Dodge, number 18, lies in third. Dockin, 25 years old. Mom and dad mortgaged the family business property last year in order to keep him in racing. He says, there's not enough that I can do for my mom and dad. His dad, Wayne Dockin, was a grand old drag racer. Here we come to the inside. Not that time. Corset has just gone back in the pits. Look wow. at this move outside. Well, isn't just that what his mother told him to do, Ken? <laughs> she said right at the beginning of the show, she said, just like last week on the outside, he listened to his mother. Save the tires. Yep. Then make a run for it. Boy, he made it look too easy. Pickle around Jack Sprague and back into first place, and Dockin is closing. There's Mother Bickle in there scoring. She's got a smile. Mrs. She Bliss right there beside her in the white sweater. This is not over yet, though. Mm -mm. Sprague is still strong. Tire management will play a major role. 168 laps down. That was 169 as they crossed the line. Bliss is back in fifth spot. Jack Sprague hasn't given up on this one. But boy, is this a beautifully controlled race by Bickle. He 
just rolled up the outside and set this number 17 right back on the point. Can it stay there? We're going to have lap 170 complete this time. 30 to go. Dawkin is in the picture. Dawkin in that Dodge running in third spot has run the leaders down. He is right there in Kurt Roaring's truck, the number 18. 25 years old, Dawkin. From Clearwater, Florida. There he is. Son of the pole in Tucson. Led 95 laps there more than anybody else. There's a guy, there's a guy this year that reminds me of Dawkin a year ago, and it's that Doug George in number 12. He's struggling, got everything he has invested in trying to keep running this year. Good racer. Dawkin gets it all together this year, and that Dodge is up there in third. Could be another great day for Dodge, just the way things are. Now take a look here. Bob Kasolowski in another Dodge, and Rutman in that Roush Ford. You're looking at the 29. Let's see, that's fourth and fifth. Kazalowski in fourth around Jay Sauter. Rutman stays right with him. And Rutman's coming up on Tammy Joe Kirk, his buddy from a week ago, and they both ended up on the bottom of the racetrack in turn three. A little altercation with a few laps left on that one. Now, Tammy Joe said that her radio was not working at all in the second half. She had no idea Joe Rutman was there. Talked to Joe about it. He said, fine, we'll let it go at that. That's not exactly what he told me. Randy Talsman, the number 61, flat left front. He's in the midst. Joe Rutman. Having another very good day for Roush. Let's see if he gets under right here. As Alosky gets high, and Rutman is able to hold it on the bottom but not get through. Fourth place, 29 and 80. 175 complete this time by and 25 to go. Rich Bickle just pulled up and here comes Rutman down to the inside to challenge another time and the Ford beneath the Dodge. He's got him. It's Joe Rutman rolling up another spot. Number 80 goes into fourth. Bob Kazalowski back to fifth. Right where he finished. One week back for his best finish of his career. Mike Bliss, he's in six. Irwin in seventh, the number 98. Irwin has come the long, hard way from a provisional starting spot all the way in the back up to sixth. 1996 United States Auto Club midget champion. He's got another midget champion right in front of him in Mike Bliss. Both of them open wheel veterans who enjoyed considerable success before joining the truck series. Irwin on the inside. Yeah, but both of them have done that open wheel on pavement. It's so hard to make that conversion from dirt up into this series. It's so different. As we saw Mark Kinzer find out last night in qualifying. Up in front, Spray trying to close down on Rich Bickle, number 17, still another time. Four wins for Sprague a year ago. One win already this year. And Rich Bickle coming on strong. Will it be two in a row for the Darrell Waltrip team out here in the Northwest? Remember that number 17 truck of Bickle in the lead? Same truck he used last week to win the pole in the race. Same engine. All they did was change the valve springs in that engine. Take a look, tighten everything up. They did have to do a good bit of sheet metal work on it. It was bent here, there, and about everywhere. They got all that work done, and obviously they've done their work well, Ken. As Bickle in number 17 gets a one truck length advantage, truck and a half over Jack Sprague in second spot. Bickle's the one that had the beer can collection, sold his first collection, got enough money to buy a stock car. Well, he may not make well start a new collection. He was on uh, a nuclear submarine, the USS Georgie, this week and traded, believe it or not, his sponsor jacket that he wore onto the submarine for a USS Georgie jacket, and that's all he's worn here all weekend. He tried the simulator, said that is a very difficult thing to drive, a submarine. <laughs> Not quite as fast as this NASCAR Craftsman truck. Well, as his mother looks on, she called the shot at the start. He's in front. Ah, look at Rutman in the number 80 closing up on Tammy Joe Kirk. Remember what happened last week? Here's Mike Hogwood. We're with Randy Goss, crew chief for Joe Rutman. We've just seen him move up to fourth. Less than 25 laps to go. It's time for Joe to go now, too. 
Yeah, I just got by Tammy. The LCI Ford seems like it's hooked up, but the tires could run out at any time. We're hoping if we get a caution, we get hooked up with the front, we can give some trouble. Randy says you go as long as the tires will let you, and that's what Joe's doing right now. And Tammy Jo Kirk is having another good run. She's come from out back, last row at the start, and she's up to 13th position, a lap down of that number seven. And she was up fighting in fourth spot with Rutman, third and fourth, a week ago when they tangled on the back straightaway and both ended up dumping their trucks in the infield and finishing out of the top ten. Eight lead changes among five drivers thus far today at Monroe down toward the end. 182, 183 this time by. Ke this is her fifth spot, the 29. Keslowski is in fifth. Irwin in sixth on the bottom, trying to take it away. He's that got it. Kenny Irwin is having a great run. You talk about tire conservation. He's got the job done, and now he's really lighting this racetrack up. Kenny Irwin out of Indianapolis. Provisional starter today, 29th when this race began. He finds himself right back up in the front of it. And there is Mike Bliss in the number two. Last year's winner of this event. Currently in six. Hasn't led a lap yet today. They've been searching, trying to get as fast as they were last year. Guys just couldn't do it. And if you're just joining us today, next truck race coming up, Odessa, Odessa, Missouri, then up to New Hampshire on the 31st of May. And our congratulations certainly to Mark Martin for his brilliant victory this afternoon at Talladega, Alabama. Mark Martin victorious there. Can't wait to see him take on that mile and a half at Charlotte, North Carolina, 6 o'clock, Sunday the 25th on Superstation, TBS, the biggie. Starts in the daylight, ends with all the fireworks after dark. Well, fireworks all the way through that one usually. Yellow Hope you'll be with us to enjoy. Got the yellow number 19 on the bottom, that's Tony Raines, the 1996 ASA champion. That's the other Kirk Roaring truck. Dockin drives one of them, Raines drives the other. And they're just zipping by Jay Sauter, who's had a tough day. His truck is pretty well came in, and he is well off the pace in that black number three. Tony Raines out of LaPorte, Indiana. We hear a lot from him. Started out at South Bend in New Paris years ago. Great critic of his own driving. He said he picked the wrong lane three times in a row last week. He wasn't going to make that kind of a mistake again. Another one of those graduates of that Baker Motorsports that gave us Musgrave and Donner out there in the Midwest. And uh, that great young driver that was killed, Pat Shower drove for Baker Motorsports. And Steve Carlson, I think, is with him right now. That's where they have found this guy, Reigns, in that uh, Pennzoil yellow rig. Ah, trouble on Barfield, the 55. Backing up a bit, looks like the rubber may be gone. And here's Hornaday down on the inside and right with him comes that rookie Compton in the 86 up to seventh spot. Give him a call. He's had a good afternoon. Get another one who's started way in the back. Toby Butler in the 52 trying to make some hay here at the end of the race. Ten to go this time by Stacy Compton and that number 86 that started eighth today finds himself in seventh. Hornaday from a lap down. He's all the way up to ninth now. Butch Miller, Miller behind him. Number 20, and there's his mother looking on. Not too happy with the way Butch is doing today. There may no. be some coaching when this one's <laughs> over, Dr. Berger. <laughs> I think so. Yeah. Mom and Dad have been with Butch not only for this race. They were out last weekend at Portland as well. Yeah. Well, they moved out of snow country. They, yeah. they came down to Arizona. And they used to follow him everywhere. Not as easy to do anymore, but Roper. they sure do love to watch him race. Look at Roper in the 31. He's doing well. All his furniture in that truck, in his race car hauler, back home again. I hope his wife likes the new home he's picked out for again. <laughs> she quit her job on Thursday. Hasn't got another job. She said, well, wherever he goes, I'm going to go along with him. He's back in 16th spot. He Roper married a in the saint. 31. <laughs> he married a saint. <laughs> of those drivers if they have a marriage the last they have found a saint that's for sure tough life but a good one way of life like any other for these folks 
for Rich Bickle. What he's done, all he's ever wanted to do. Caution's out. Yellow is down. This is at lap 193. And remember, this race will not finish under a caution. It'll have a green, white, and checker. And I think it's for the 56. Looks like he came off his speed. Brandon Butler up in turn three, and it's coasting around the track. He's trying to get back into the pit area. You have to come all the way down across the start finish line and go into the quarter mile track where they're pitting. Here's Mike Hogwood. This caution is something that Jack Sprague really wanted. He, his tires had gone away for him. He, he didn't feel he had a shot at catching Rich Bickle, but now maybe he can scrub up the tires a little bit and summon up something for a couple of laps and maybe have something for truck number 17. And it's a great break for Dockin, too. That Dana Dodge is back up in there. 10 lap rule, it'll be a single file wow. restart, yep, with the uh, lead lap trucks in front. So Sprague will get to close up, but he will not get to start beside the 17. Lap trucks will not play a factor. They were beginning to play a role here until this caution flag. Bickle had gotten by several of them. They've stopped Chuck Bound in the 99 now, trying to get him in a correct position. Take a look at the top 10 here. Bickle, Sprague, Dockin, Joe Rutland the fourth. Big break for him. Kenny Irwin. Bob Kazalowski is there in six, Mike Bliss in seventh, and Stacy Compton. Outstanding job for him into eighth, then Hornaday, then Miller. And he'll be in a bundle. Compton had never seen this racetrack before he came here, neither had his crew chief, so they have really done a great job of getting that truck ready and getting it prepared as well as it's been. Federated Auto Parts Ford, uh, Boris said, giving us uh, these shots. He's had a tough day. They've tried to get that thing to work all afternoon haven't had too much luck with him. So much for Hippopotamus entry into the corner. <laughs> <laughs> he's still trying to get his ride for Le Mans. Le Mans is in June. It's on an off weekend for the truck series. He says he's real close to something. He said what? He said a Ford. He and Lance Norrick are a couple of those new young stars so serious about this racing. They'll do anything they can to improve themselves in it. Some of those guys are looking for that double file restart. They're being told, I'm sure, on their headsets, this is not the game. We are at 10 laps, and you see trickling down to the inside. Chuck Bound is out there. Refner fell to the inside, hoping for that double file restart, which is not to happen. Randy Tulsma did it as well. Single file to get this one done. 194 complete. They're told to back up and get in line. 13 trucks still on the lead lap. NASCAR is parking instructions. We need instructions to their drivers tell them where to go there is no arguing whatever nascar says that is where you start the interesting thing is the 99 truck i'm not he's trying to find a hole well he's he's down two laps ken that's the problem bound is down two laps and uh reigns and kirk they're only down one lap so he's trying to figure out where he's supposed to be he's going to drop back now chuck bound just going to hold off going to be a three lap shootout it appears to get this one done one more lap and then they'll get them going and I think some of those drivers are confused and they think they can come up from a couple of laps down Tammy Joe Kirk comes down rain starts to look for an inside hole oh and they're all doubled up back here there's Rich Bickle your man up in front going for two in a row here this afternoon Wisconsin's given us a lot of fine racers recently, and they're giving us more. Johnny Benson, of course, out of Grand Rapids, Michigan, neighboring state. That part of the country just seems to have come out of Slinger Speedway and Mount Clemens and all up through Wisconsin there. Wisconsin Rapids. And Wisconsin Rapids. Michigan, Wisconsin has some great racers. They're still trying to get these guys in order, and ladies, for this uh, finish this afternoon. Coming green this time by. Yep, light out on the pace truck. Well, we'll see what happens. Bickle is going real, real slow up there in turn three and four. Real slow. Well, here's where we're going to see, Ken, who can go through the gears okay. and who cannot. Truck coming in, green ready to drop. And Bickle gets himself a tremendous start. Boy, he was on top of that one and grabbed off a couple of lengths as they came down across the line. Ah, uh, we got one down. We've got one stopped. It's Sodder 
on the back straightaway, as they came around to the flag, several of them came to a complete halt as they tried to get them back in that single file start, and Jay Sauter couldn't get fired. So you're going to see green, white, and checkers to decide this one. And the problem for Bickle is he has just laid his cards on the table face up. And Jack Sprague knows exactly what he has in mind for a restart at the very tail end of the race. And yeah, Bickle he will may not give himself another hand. He yeah. may well, but he's not going to get away with that move two <laughs> times in a row. 14,000 folks have filled this grandstand at Monroe, Washington. They saw Rich Bickle set a new track record at over 100 miles per hour. He and the High Plains drifter Rick Corelli, the first two to break that 100 mile per hour barrier in the trucks their third performance here in the Northwest at this beautiful six-tenths of a mile track. And Bickle has been putting on the show most of the day, some of the time with Hornaday in the early going, and Jack Sprague, who isn't, doesn't, says himself, he's not a short track racer, has driven one of his best. He's up there in that second spot. Now there's Mom Bickle and Mother Bliss side by side as we get down inside this one. And checking each other's scorecards. Yeah, they are. And the fans in this grandstand are some happy to have this beautiful day today. This racetrack runs rain or shine for its regular Saturday night program. And for the last three weeks in a row, they have had a deluge here. And the fans who have come to see the races have seen the race cars on the track with rain tires, windshield whoppers, washers, and they have had to have their umbrellas in the grandstand yeah. for sure. And today is as nice a day as you could ever imagine. 70 degrees sunshine out here and a gorgeous view of the trucks and the mountains off in the background 50 times a year they run this racetrack you think of the northwest you think of the northeast you know if you get in 25 or 30 shows you had a pretty good season out here they run 50 times a year usually twice a, a week yep friday nights and saturday nights this will not finish under caution it's going to be a green white checker jay sodders number three being pushed in children's truck not going to finish, and the 35 truck is being held right here at the start line. What the story is on number 35, we'll see Resendez in the Ortholon Garden Products Chevrolet awaits the field. Remember, he was the last guy on the lead lap, still is showing as the last truck on the lead lap. And we're down to that count of green, white, and checkers, so yeah. they can get them exactly as they want them to get this one over with. Waiting to pick up Resendez and decide it today. One to go this time by. Will it be Bickle for his second straight? Will Jack Sprague win his second race of the year and his first in the short track series? Will Michael Dawkin in that Dodge gun them both down? He's lying there in third and he has had an outstanding afternoon. Joe Rutman, his kind of day, his kind of racetrack kind of a race of the big and the small of it isn't it Ken Bickle who is on the lead is six foot five 220 pounds Dockin who there's Dennis Connor crew chief for Jack Sprague Dockin I think probably runs 130 pounds soaking wet and Jack Sprague's right about in the middle of all yeah, of yeah. that they don't give these guys a weight break for the heavier uh -huh. drivers bigger men like Bickle they just run at a disadvantage when compared to someone like Dockin who's much lighter the the trucks the equalizer here you're all the same when you strap into these rigs. Paul oh, Yarborough made that statement once. He was standing beside Joe Rutland. Yeah. Somebody was talking about, gee whiz. <laughs> Pretty Kale's big a guy. little guy, said, though. Hey, Kale said, we put our foot down. We're all the same size. All right, we're ready for the shootout. Shootout of the Northwest. Race number six of the series for the Craftsman Trucks of NASCAR. And to the line they come. Green is down. Rich Bickle holds it into one. Spray comes after him. Dockin, nice tight line, not giving the inside away to Rutman. Joe Rutman goes to the outside at number 80 and going down the back straightaway. Out in front by one truck length, it is Bickle. Sprague tries to cut it back as they come through three. White flag is in hand as they come up. White flag this time by. Bickle still got it. He's just got to go through four more corners. The back stretch, and it'll be his, and it'll be two in a row. Doc and Rutman, Sprague, and Kenny Irwin back there. Makes a move on Rutman. Kenny Irwin trying to get through. Final lap. Sprague closes him down. Sprague closes in on Bickle. Bickle off four. Smooth. Pulls it back. Hits it. Comes to the line. Give the victory for the second straight week. 
to the Sears Die Hard truck. It is Bickle across. Let's go to Steve Burns. How about that, Dave McCarty? Two in a row. Oh, man, two in a row is great. I got to thank Sears and, and Die Hard and the whole crew, Daryl Walter Motorsports. We had a miss with about 30 laps to go, and we were just hoping we, that thing was going to hold on. I'll tell you what, this is great, two back to back. Congratulations. Thank you. Rich Bickle wins it. Plastic coat, the official spray painted NASCAR, proud to sponsor the winning finish award presented to that crew chief and the winning team today. Plastic coat, $1,000 to the folks with the highest finishing Craftsman truck team participating in Plastic Coat's award program. And at the end of the year, the crew chief with the best average finish will win $10,000. Congratulations in order to Dave McCarty. We'll be back to meet the winner in a moment here at Monroe. Your new hired man really got the chores done. Let's go down to the Purillator Winner's Circle with Mike Hogwood. And this is one happy driver, second week in a row. You, you own the short tracks in this truck series right now. All I can say is, like I said last week, they didn't play it. Sears Die Hard Chevrolet, awesome. Unbelievable. These guys give me the best truck I've ever set in. We went to Hickory with it, and we tested it. I mean, it was just incredible, incredible truck. We come here to both all, all the North Pacific races, and just this thing, you couldn't ask for anything better. You know, i got to say thanks to the people that helped me from day one. Gene Ruckty, the Patch families, uh, all the sponsors throughout my life. G Gene Eisenhower, Turnbull Truck, and everybody that's got me here, thank you. And uh, happy Mother's Day, because my mom's right here. Uh, my Bickle, this is some victory for the boy, yes, huh? Bro, and his birthday, too, Z. So, yeah. so Early I'm birthday present. <laughs> Talk quickly about that battle with Jack Sprague down the stretch. He was pretty tough for you. Jack was good. I didn't know where he come from, because the first half, I never seen him. And, you know, I just was worried about, <coughs> excuse me, about... You know, saved my tires. He got by me. I just, you know, saved it. But, but I can't believe it. I lost a cylinder in the motor with about 50 to go, and it helped me out. I couldn't spin the rear tires. But like I said, all I can say is about this diehard Chevrolet. Daryl Waltrip, I hope you had a great day. I hope you got to watch part of this, baby, because we're bringing home the trophy. All right, another trophy going to Daryl Waltrip Motorsports, and mom and son celebrating here. Let's go to Steve Burns. And with Jack Sprague, another great battle with Rich Bickle. Uh, just came up short. Just short, just short. Uh, first thing I'd like to say is happy Mother's Day to my mom. Hi, Mom. i tell you what, Quaker State Chevrolet ran awful good all day. It was, uh, we weren't happy with it at all yesterday and changed all four springs this morning, basically changed the whole setup. Dennis did and, and the guys, and they've done a great job. And the truck was a little loose the first half, so we tightened it up a little bit and tightened it up a little too much, and I, I couldn't turn it the second half. But uh, had a lot of fun racing with Rich, and I really thought we might get our sh first short track one here today, but like to say hi to Rick at home and uh, Jimmy Johnson and thanks for everything and hey it was a great day we're second we're still in the points chase now we're going to go to some tracks that I like and Jack we should point out that there have been 50 races in this series and you're the only driver to finish all 50 that's quite an accomplishment well I hope you don't jinx me but uh, hey uh, that's just a tribute to this Quaker State team and you know the guys do a great job they work hard they're determined they're intense and uh uh, there's nowhere I'd rather be. I mean, it's we're keeping in the points, Chase. These were the two worst races we had last year, Portland and Evergreen, besides getting knocked out. We ran fourth last week, ran second here at Evergreen. This is the only place I've ever gone a lap down. That was last year. So, hey, I'm tickled to death. We're going to win some short track races, and we're going to win some more speedway races. Well, Jack gave all the credit to the team, but the driver did a good job today, too. Let's go back to Ken Squire. 23rd two years ago, 12th last year, second this year. He's getting the hang of these short tracks and doing it well. Jack Sprague, second place. And Dennis Connor, the crew chief for Jack Sprague, will not have to uh, shave his head. So uh, at least Mrs. Connor will go home with him tonight. Take a look at this unofficial rundown. Butch Miller ended up 10th today. Mike Bliss, Kazalowski, great run. Look at Ron Barfield, 12th spot. They backed up some at the end of this race. I'm sure they were out of tires. Rick Corelli outside of the front row wound up in 18th position today. And looking further back through the field, Resendez got himself a uh, 21st finishing position on this six-tenths of a mile track. Exciting afternoon out here in the Northwest. Uh, Andy Gensman had trouble from the outset. Several good rigs didn't make this field, including, as we mentioned earlier, um, the, the folks from uh, out in the Midwest, Carl Kinzer, who, who failed to qualify. That was a tough break for him. Let's go back to Steve Burns. And how about a great run for Michael Dawkins? He's been getting congratulations all the way around. How about that, buddy? Well, I got to thank my parents, Kurt Rorg, Dana Dodge. Um, get well, Trina. Um, my, my parents have really... If, if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be here. And Kurt Rorg is, and uh, the team are awesome. They, they just said they've been working hard all year. 
we just had a few bad breaks early in the year, and they just keep on digging, and the truck, the truck's been awesome. All right, well, Dick Bergen talked about how you slept in your truck last year. A day like this makes it pay off. Yeah, this, this definitely pays off today, and hopefully we can keep improving from here. All right, good run. Let's go back to Ken Squire. And maybe next time around we'll tell you about how Michael Dockin uh, does those turkeys <laughs> in those parking lots. Great kid. Wonderful race for him today. More in a moment from Monroe. And as the Craftsman trucks get ready to move back east toward Odessa, Missouri, Rich Bickle extends his point lead by 10 up to 51 over Jack Sprague. And Mike Bliss moves from fourth to third in the standings. Hornaday back and forth and Butch Miller in fifth after this great race this afternoon. So there's how they stand at the present time as they get ready to head to Missouri and then up to New Hampshire International Speedway. But well, we're all going to be going to Charlotte Motor Speedway in a couple of weeks. Bush Grand National race there on Saturday. Bickle and Sprague were both surprise pole winners there a couple of years ago. And uh, have a Bush Grand National race on Saturday and then that big 600 miler on Sunday. Going to start late in the afternoon. So some of the guys are going to be able to run Indianapolis, jump on a plane, fly to Charlotte, and try to run the stock cars at night. Six o'clock is when that race will start. We'll be with you about 5.30 as the celebration continues for Rich Bickle on this Mother's Day weekend at Monroe, Washington. Outstanding race out here for the second straight week for Vickle and for that Darrell Waltrip team. Hey, uh, coming up later this afternoon here on TBS or in the evening of Back East, 6.05, uh, join us for all the action. The WCW is coming up with a big show on Saturday night. And then, coming up a little later, we're going over to Three Rivers Stadium over in Pittsburgh. Central Division leader Pittsburgh by a half game over Houston tangles with the Eastern leader, the America's team, Atlanta Braves. Hope you'll be around to enjoy that at 7 or 7.05 tonight. And again, here we are Saturday, May the 24th at CarQuest 300. And our special road to the championship, that's coming up on Saturday from the Charlotte Motor Speedway and Sunday's the biggie. The Coca-Cola 600 at 6.05. Join us at 5.35 for some of the great pre-race celebration that they always have there at Charlotte. Hey, that's going to do it for today for Dick Bergren, Mike Hogwood, and Steve Burns celebrating Rich Bickle and Darrell Waltrip's team with another outstanding victory, this time at Monroe, Washington. It's all been a wonderful afternoon of racing, and we're going to be seeing more of this Later this year, here on Superstation WTBS, we'll be with you at Pocono, Pennsylvania, as well as Charlotte. Come down to the end of the season, take you out to Phoenix, Arizona, and give you more of the dramatic action there. So that's it for today. Hope you've enjoyed NASCAR Craftsman Truck Racing, coming to you from Monroe, Washington. Good afternoon. I'm Ken Squire.